Right. Um, uh, so welcome back. And we're talking about how to pray for uh, people who are lost. Uh, we'll, we said that um, usually when we are praying for those who are unbelievers, there is something more than praying to the Father because there's also Satan and we have to fight the devil. And we said that he deceives people, he keeps them in bondages um, and that he will try to oppose the proclamation of the gospel. So how exactly to go about, um, you know, uh, releasing these people is the question. But one more thing we have to understand as a church, right? When we say um, you are the church, I am the church, that means each and every one of us is a part of the church. Okay, so all of us are the church. And when we look at the scriptures in the word of God, we see that the church is a very powerful entity. So when we think about the church, um, do, we, do we consider it powerful or weak? Powerful. The church is powerful, right? How are we saying it's powerful? Because sometimes we have only small gatherings. Some churches have only five people, ten people. How is it powerful? Or maybe they don't have a lot of money. So how are you saying church is powerful? Spiritually, that's right. So spiritually, according to the work that God has done, the church, meaning whenever we say the church, Think about yourself. I am the church, right? You are the church. We are powerful as far as God is concerned. Why are we powerful? Because God has called the church to be the light in the darkness. So we are the light in the darkness. Let the devil do whatever he wants to do. But because we are here, imagine we are all born again, right? We are born again and uh, we have such a beautiful promise from God for eternal life. As soon as we are born again, how about, you know, we just go to heaven and have a nice life. Wouldn't that be nice? Because everything Jesus has done on the cross, why should we be here on earth and struggle? But there is a reason why we are still here. One is we are growing maturing to become more like Jesus. Second is, there is an assignment or there is some work that God is giving all of us. If there is no assignment, no work, just go to heaven, right? Be happy. Jesus did everything. All the blessings are mine. Just be happy. But we have to do a work. As the church, God is calling us to um, be that light, Okay, that's why we are still here and we need to understand there are many scriptures. I'm not going to go through all those scriptures. One passage we can read that is Isaiah 61 verses 1 and 2. Isaiah 61 verses 1 and 2. So if, if anybody is there, you can go ahead, open it and um, read it aloud, please. Yeah, Isaiah 61, verses 1 and 2. Can I read, sister? Uh, okay, yes, sister Gertrude, you can read. Isaiah 61. Yes. Uh, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound. Okay. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God. To okay. comfort all who mourn. Yes. So uh, in this passage, thank you, sister. Uh, we see that Jesus, you know, later on in Luke chapter four, Jesus said the same uh, passage when he started the ministry. So he opened the, the, uh, the book of the law and then he started reading in the synagogue. And he read this passage, Isaiah 61, and he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. 
to proclaim the good news to the poor, to uh, set the captives free. So he goes on to state that. So what we understand here is, when the Holy Spirit is upon us, we will proclaim the good news. We will set the captives free or we will set the prisoners free. Who are the prisoners? Who are the prisoners? Captives? Sinners. Yeah, sinners or unbelievers, in other words. So, what we re recognize here is that the church has a responsibility. Why are we still here on earth? We have a big responsibility. And that responsibility is we have to proclaim the gospel to the people. We have to set the captives free. That is our job. And uh, we need to understand that this authority has been given to the church. What if the church doesn't do it? Or if you and I don't do it, who will do it? Who will do it? We are only supposed to do it. Right? So we have to understand this. When we talk about people are lost, you know, so many people don't know about God. There are so many unreached people groups in the world. We talk about all these things. But whose responsibility is it to go and preach the gospel to all of them? We, because a great commission has been given to us. And Jesus is authorizing us to be the light to the people who are in darkness, for us to set the captives free, those who are prisoners, we are the ones who are supposed to set them free. So what I want us to recognize today is, yes, pray for the lost, but remember that you and I carry the authority. So it's, it's going to be so sad if we have the authority and we did not use it at all, right, to bring people to Christ. So use that authority to um, set people free. So we are carrying kingdom authority. We have spiritual weapons. Okay, we will read about weapons and all later when you read about believers' authority. But do you know that you have some spiritual weapons? What weapons do you have? Some guns and some, you know, danda and everything. <laughs> no? So what, what weapons are you carrying as a believer? I, I can't hear what weapons you have, Asafu. Huh? Faith. Speaking in tongues, faith, word of God, prayer. Okay, Jesus, the name of Jesus, right? Yeah, so many of these things that you've listed come under the category of weapons. So when you speak the word of God, how did Jesus fight the devil? When uh, the devil came, he was fasting for 40 days, right? And the devil said, you bow down before me. I will give you the kingdoms of this world. What did Jesus do? He fought the devil. How? Word of God. He said, it is written. Satan, it is written like this. So he spoke the word of God. After some time, the devil was like, okay, leave me alone. I'm going. Bye. <laughs> right? So you can fight the devil with some spiritual weapons. And Jesus gives the weapons to the church. We have the weapons. Imagine, right? Like, let's say um, the thief comes to uh, somebody's house and they have all the weapons, right? They have all the weapons. They're sitting there. The thief is robbing. And you're just looking at the thief. Ah, okay. You know, take whatever you want. You want more things? Go inside. Take it and go. So foolish. It'll be so foolish because they have all the weapons. Just take the weapon. Attack the devil or the thief. That's our responsibility. So as believers, the point that I'm trying to make is, you know, we don't realize how powerful Christ has made us. We sit and say, the devil is doing this, the devil is doing that. Oh, I'm so scared. Right? Just use the weapons. Use the name of Jesus against the devil. Use the word of God against the devil. Use the power of the blood of Jesus against the devil and say, devil, stop it. I am already victorious. You can't do this. Right? So, as a church, we have to wake up. Because we have been given the authority. We have been given the weapons. In fact, it's the devil who should be running around. Because he's scared. Oh, these people will attack me. He should know that we can attack him. 
you got it so we are so powerful as far as who jesus has made us but we need to take our position what is the use of a soldier who doesn't fight imagine somebody is a soldier right but goes home nicely sleeping eating enjoying his life war is going on but soldier is enjoying his life what's the use no use weapon is there authority is there everything is there but not using it that's the problem so when especially we pray for the unbelievers those who are lost those who are not saved we have to take up our position and say we will not let you do this devil okay by the spirit of god in the name of jesus we are coming against you and you have to let the prisoners go free so it's a fight and we have to engage in that fight um how do we how do we exercise our authority against the devil tell me weapons are there use the weapons what else can we do anything else we can do spiritual warfare prayer yes we can pray good yeah what else we can do we are fighting the devil how are you going to fight the devil okay use the authority how how to use it does the bible say anything command okay command okay good um there is one particular uh, passage okay matthew 16 verses 18 and 19 where jesus said i give you the keys of the kingdom whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven so how to exercise our authority you know what we can do we can bind we can loose so how do we do that it's very simple when we see that there are uh, you know something the devil is doing we can as um, you know daniel just said command we can command the devil and we can say i bind you in the name of jesus okay i stop you these are all words we can use to use the authority now if we don't use our authority you know it's it's actually our fault because we are letting the devil do whatever he wants to do you got it so just bind the devil if you see the devil is doing something um we'll we'll come to that you just say i bind you in the name of jesus okay you can even lose lose is like um, i lose the power of the holy spirit on the life of this person i lose the peace of god on this person so generally you know some things of the kingdom of god we say that we are losing it on people's lives got it so bind the devil and lose the works of the kingdom on the people so when we say things like that you will understand uh, that you know it's really powerful and it works so this is one way to use the authority second way to use the authority is in second corinthians 10 verses 3 to 6 it says taking every thought captive which exalts itself against the knowledge of god so that means you see can one wrong thought be harmful my question to you just one wrong thought every thought is correct according to the bible only one wrong thought is that dangerous or is it okay dangerous why why is it dangerous just one wrong thought no one wrong belief we have think about the the garden of eden okay how many mistakes did they make only one mistake the whole earth is now corrupted with sin because god is so holy even one tiny mistake good enough for us to fall short of his glory right we just fell from his glory but just one mistake because god is so pure and so holy that it you just cannot accommodate even one wrong thought you got it so in second corinthians 10 what we just saw uh we need to take every thought captive 
right? Uh, which exalts itself against the knowledge of God. So always be mindful of what we are thinking because what is the battleground for the devil? The mind. So that is where he gets us and we have to be careful. And here we are learning one way of exercising authority is to pull down the wrong thoughts. So when we are praying against the devil, we can pray something like this wrong thought or this deception. I tear it down in the name of Jesus. Got it? So that's how we can exercise the authority. Bind, lose, tear down, pull down. These are the words that you can use. So imagine, okay, we are fighting against the devil. We are praying for somebody. That person is lost. That person is, uh, okay, imagine, maybe my family member, uh, a young man, he uh, is not saved. He is, uh, you know, into all kinds of worldly things. And uh, maybe he's into some addictions and I'm praying, maybe my brother, and I'm praying for my brother, right? So how do I fight the devil? How will it sound when I'm fighting the devil for my brother? How will the prayer sound? So I'm exercising authority on behalf of him. So how, how will I pray? Just use all the weapons, right? Against the devil. It's okay to get angry with the devil, right? So when you're fight, you're praying, it's, it may sound like fighting. Because you're saying, devil, I will, I'm coming against you in the name of Jesus. I won't let you do this in my brother's life. I bind every deceptive spirit. I bind every spirit of confusion. I bind every spirit of anxiety, every spirit of fear in the name of Jesus. I command, um, you know, every, every demonic stronghold in his life to be broken in the name of Jesus. So you're literally shouting, screaming, fighting the devil. Okay, it doesn't sound like ordinary prayer. How does your usual prayer sound when you pray to the heavenly father? A little more mellow, a little more calm, right? Dear heavenly father, that's how we pray. But when we are doing spiritual warfare, we're talking to the devil. Got it? So you can be angry, no problem. Just stop him. Say, you can't do this. I'm coming against you. Okay? So that's how it should be. We have to take our position and pray for the people whom the devil is binding and making them as prisoners. If we don't do that, who will do that for them? So we have to engage in spiritual warfare for the people. And here is one more thing. To exercise our authority, one more thing what we can do is, we can tell the devil what Jesus has done on the cross. And he doesn't like it. Okay? He just doesn't like it. I don't know if any of you, when you are casting out demons, you've observed this. You know, when you start saying, uh, Jesus has won the victory on the cross, the person, whoever is, you know, demon person, they'll be like, no, stop it. I don't want to hear that. Okay, I don't want to hear it. Because Satan does not want to hear about the victory of Jesus on the cross. So then we should do it more because he doesn't like it. Right? So we start to say, 2,000 years ago, Jesus has defeated you. Devil, you have no authority. You have no power. You are, you, um, you know, you're destroyed. And um, Jesus has given me the authority. So I speak to you in the name of Jesus. I command you in the name of Jesus. So this is the way spiritual warfare has to go on for somebody who is lost. So start to do this. See, we all go for outreaches, right? So before we go for outreaches also, we can pray, spend some time. Uh, one is we are praying, God, you work in their lives, you bless them. All that's nice. You're praying to the Father. On the other hand, we have to do some spiritual warfare and say, come on, whatever spirits are working behind them, you have no chance. We destroy you in Jesus' name. We ask for open doors in the name of Jesus. So when we pray for people who are lost, it's a spiritual activity. You have to combine praying for them and fighting with Satan. That's the right way of doing it. Okay. So as we do this, what can we expect? What can we expect? Hmm? Yeah, victory. Um, but how may it look? Um, 
like uh, let's imagine okay we are going to some area to do outreach the first time we go there there's a lot of opposition then we are also praying before we go we are praying for them we are doing spiritual warfare and we are going maybe we are praying for one month what can you expect on the ground where you are doing outreach some changes hopefully right some changes some new opportunity maybe favor from one person they say okay you come no problem you preach right you see it's never easy because the devil will not let us do it he'll create some trouble so when we fight against the devil we pray hard and then we go what we are doing is we are pushing spiritually we are pushing into those places so even when we uh, talk about um, uh, church planting right some of you want to be pastors right that time we will talk about um one of the stages of church planting which is to take time in prayer and spiritual warfare because in that region where we are going to plant the church we have to overcome the demonic strongholds in that place then the work of our ministry can go strong if we don't do spiritual warfare actually there will be demonic opposition but we won't be able to do our work effectively you got it so it is a very important aspect of any form of outreach ministry right we need to pray we need to uh, engage in spiritual warfare destroy the work of the devil and then go inside okay so uh, now we have understood how to pray against the devil now how to pray to god for the people what prayers can we make to god for the people the devil will say okay we stop you this is what jesus has done you are defeated all that we tell the devil what do we pray to god any prayers to to god prayer of deliverance sister prayer of deliverance okay sure yeah yeah um prayer of deliverance fine yeah we can ask the the father to set them free that's correct um anything else any other points holy spirit can speak to them through dreams and visions true so in john chapter 16 verses 7 through 11 um the bible says that the work of the holy spirit is to convict people of sin righteousness and judgment so you're right sister gertrude it's the work of the holy spirit to help them understand so sometimes what do we do when uh, people are not born again in our families we try to behave like the holy spirit right we try to convict them we tell them so you're so wrong you god will never bless you you know you never come to church you are like this you are like that we are trying to condemn them does that help see if you don't believe in jesus you're going to hell right some people say like that also but will that encourage them to become a believer no so if we nag them if we scold them if we condemn them it won't work instead of that what we can do is we can say holy spirit you speak to them because in john 16 it says the work of the holy spirit is to convict in the heart the holy spirit will go and speak to them and say what you are doing is not correct this this path is not correct so let the holy spirit speak to them we should not condemn them understood so yes sir, sister get to so we can pray and say holy spirit speak to them speak to their hearts so you will be so amazed when uh, you know you see god working in their lives we are praying for them quietly but god is working in their lives 
right in an amazing way they'll come back with all kinds of testimonies so at one point i was praying for one person and uh, you know this uh, sister she was just not listening right that there is a god and that god loves you nothing not at all listening so i was just praying for her and especially in that one season it was amazing because she was coming back to me and uh, sharing some testimonies she said something like um, you know i had gone traveling and um, she likes like museums you know museums and things like that so there was a museum there she went to the museum and the museum had butterflies it had butterflies all kinds of butterflies and all that so she came back and told me can you know what i was so feeling so sad but that day i found a museum i went to the museum and it had butterflies and i felt like she's telling me okay she doesn't believe in god nothing she's telling me i felt maybe god is teaching me to asking me to change because what is the meaning of butterfly usually you know the butterfly it changes right from a caterpillar into a butterfly so she felt like god is speaking to her just by visiting that museum and uh, telling her that you need to change so she came and told me so i was so amazed i was like oh my prayers are working i need to pray more see it's better to pray than to keep condemning them you guide them that's nice but most of the time what believers end up doing is we put people down and we say god will never bless you you are so unholy so many things we say but that's not how we should do it just pray for them pray for them ask the holy spirit holy spirit you speak to them and holy spirit will speak in their hearts so this is a prayer which we can pray holy spirit you speak to them you convict them we can ask god god they are far away from you you bring them close to yourself can can we pray that yes so so many stories are there like that i remember one uh, person one of my friends her family members one by one they started uh, they gave their life to christ okay this girl she never listened she is just doing her own thing all the time everyone else is saved except her so we used to pray for her that okay god you touch her you touch her life something amazing happened one night when she was sleeping she had a dream in that dream she saw a, you know like a beautiful sea and she's walking on the beach and jesus came jesus was also walking with her and she asked him what do you want jesus do you want to tell me something then jesus told her why are you running away from me you know and then it's as if jesus is sharing his love with her and saying i am the one who has uh, wiped away your sins and uh, you know i want i have great plans for your life uh, but you are running away from me she had that in her dream she just woke up in the morning and she's like you know that fear of god came on her she became a believer today she and her husband they are pastors and they are serving in you know uh, in a particular country so amazing things happen when we pray for people they are so far away from god but you ask god to work in their life and say god you bring them close to you we don't know how you will do it maybe a dream a vision or send somebody to come and speak to them about the love of jesus or through some experience something god you do something bring them close to you we can pray such prayers okay and uh, surely god answers he hears these prayers then we can also pray that god give them good knowledge help them to understand you know they are not understanding they are speaking all kinds of you know uh, worldly philosophies but you set them free from those philosophies maybe in their mind they have some thoughts that god doesn't you know god doesn't like me or um, uh, god will never bless me it is stuck in their heads so we pray god remove all those wrong philosophies patterns of thinking we break it in the name of jesus give them good knowledge help them understand who you are what you have done for them so pray like this when we pray like this 
slowly they'll begin to understand what Jesus has done for them. Uh, pray that God will give them the understanding of their calling. You know what? Sometimes people, uh, one very sad um, incident that happened to me, I think maybe I shared with you. I was talking to one young person and I said, um, okay, tell me what do you want to do after a few years? Uh, and uh, the young person looked at me and said, uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, so I was like, why? Something, there must be something you want to do, right? And um, very honestly, they said, you know, there is, uh, there's no purpose for my life. I'm just living. There's no meaning. There's no purpose. I felt so sad. I was like, I can't believe it that people are living like that. Anything, anything. I'll do anything, whatever happens tomorrow, let it happen. So people are just living life without any purpose, any focus. They don't understand what God wants from their life, right? So we can pray and we can say, God, give them the understanding. What do you want from their life? Help them to wake up, right? So that they know their calling. Think about Apostle Paul. He was persecuting the church, but God gave him the understanding that I'm calling you. You have to be a minister of the gospel. Then his life was full of purpose. He was living for that. So everybody has a call from God. We can pray and say, God, this uh, young person or this person is so far away from you, but help them understand why did you create them? What is the purpose of their lives? Then they will be able to, uh, you know, once they know it, they can live for God. Okay, so that is another prayer we can pray. We can also pray that uh, God will send more people. You remember Jesus uh, said, pray to the God of the harvest to send more laborers. So we need more people doing the ministry work, right? So when I say more people doing God's work, I don't mean full-time ministry. You can even be in the workplace, but you can be a, uh, you know, you can be a minister of God. But we can ask God, you put people in their lives who are believers, so that they can speak to them about Jesus. Okay? Even in my own experience, I've seen that for the people whom I pray for. It's amazing. They suddenly meet some believers and they have some conversations. Um, uh, they won't see when we say the same thing, they may not listen. But when God puts them in a place where there are other believers and they speak to them, maybe they might listen. Right? So in this way, what God does is, he starts to get their attention. Got it? So we can pray, Lord, send more and more people to speak about you in this person's life, where they are working, you know, where they are studying, where they are uh, doing other things. Lord, let them meet believers. Let them sow the word of God in their lives. Pray like that. Then you will find that they'll come back to you with some testimonies. We can also pray for supernatural encounters. Okay, supernatural encounters, miracles, signs, wonders. So it's when miracles happen uh, that, you know, it, it helps people realize there is a God. Okay, it saves people from um, their, their uh, whatever addictions or their behaviors and all that. And then they start to live for God. There are so many such testimonies that even I have heard where, um, you know, somebody got healed. Uh, and uh, because they got healed, they started believing in Jesus. Or they got delivered, right? And they started believing. Or they were trusting God for a miracle. The miracle happened. So they started believing. So there is one particular family um, that comes to our location and they have an amazing testimony. So one sister, she had um, a very serious uh, sickness when she was in, I think, school, high school, college, something like, uh, around that age. And uh, they, are, they are not Christians. So they used to believe in some Baba and, you know, pray and all that. So that's how they were. But they did not find healing anywhere. So one day, I think on the radio, on the radio, somebody is talking about Jesus. Jesus heals. Uh, Jesus will set you free. Just pray to Jesus. 
he will you know he'll heal you from any sickness something like that so that uncle that uh, sister's dad those days he was so desperate he didn't care which god it was the moment he heard that on the radio he told her okay come we'll pray to this jesus because nobody healed you at least let this jesus heal you and uh, they prayed she got healed okay she's now she with her family they attend and uh, it's amazing how she is now and you know um, the the story of the whole family so everyone became believers uh, and that uncle right the, that sister's dad is such a strong believer every time we spend time with him he'll have some encounter to share like when he spent lot of time in prayer what were some of the experiences that he had so strong in the lord so strong in the lord but how did it happen one miracle one healing it changed their whole life okay so the point that i'm trying to make is we can ask god god you do a miracle in their life then they will believe tell me if a miracle happens who won't believe isn't it a healing a deliverance something amazing so we can say god this is how we want you to touch them so pray all these prayers and god will minister to them uh we can finally just a few thoughts and then i will uh, close so pray against the devil break every stronghold fight the devil pray to god to send people give dreams holy spirit to convict them so many things right so in both of these ways we pray uh, and trust that people's lives can be transformed you remember that uh, that uh, story of franklin graham last class i told us right billy graham's son he was not in the lord but yeah how he came to the lord and his life was changed so you see god is a god who can do this in the life of anyone there are so so many testimonies isn't it so many testimonies where god changes the entire direction of somebody's life once they are born again okay so we need to trust god for that when we look at this man called as caleb in the bible caleb you know joshua and caleb okay joshua caleb so caleb um he had asked for a mountain when finally the israelites get their promised land he had asked god to give him one piece of the land known as it is no the name of that land is kir kirjat arba okay that's the whatever i don't know what language hebrew yeah some some language okay so it's kirjat arba that that land but the meaning of that land is the land of giants the land of giants or where um like big people scary people live so can you imagine caleb prayed for a land god gave him a land but that land had giants now what are you going to do you got it you got the mountain but the mountain is full of giants now you have to fight the giants right and you have to get them out only then you can occupy that place but the beautiful thing is that land which was given to caleb later on it was called as hebron the name of that place changed hebron means a place of friendship because what happened after caleb took the land is that um they would send people who are outlaws or you know those who are sent away from the city or banished from the the community those people maybe they are weak they are um, uh, not very good such people right they say okay you leave the community and they have no place to go to they used to go to this place hebron and they used to make their living there so it became a city of friendship or it became a city of refuge refuge means when we don't have any shelter 
we find shelter somewhere okay that is refuge so uh, the understanding is that even a land which is occupied by giants can become a place of refuge when god works so bringing this thought to um, people who are unsaved now we may look at our land and say oh people here don't know about god you know they worship other gods they do this they do that it's such an evil place we may say things like that but you see when you trust god when we trust god even the land of the giants can become a place where those who don't have anywhere to go they can come here it can become a place of refuge okay so god can do that god can not only touch one life but he can transform the entire land he can transform the entire city but we as believers we need to rise up because we have the authority yes or no we have the authority correct and we can do spiritual warfare we can pray to the father okay in this way we can see many many people saved uh so i just want to encourage us even our daily um prayer for those who are unsaved or maybe outreaches right we all engage in outreaches right pray pray before you go because it is a spiritual battle without prayer we won't get the victory okay you can do very good outreach smart ideas you know, all powerpoint this and that but there is a spiritual aspect unless we pray take authority on those demonic spirits you can't see the victory okay so this is a little bit about praying for the lost and uh, yeah i think with that i'm just going to stop unless there is a question okay um one last point that i want to say is when we say that there are some demon spirits which are influencing people and we have to pray against those demon spirits right uh there is also a concept known as spiritual mapping okay spiritual mapping means what some people do is they will try to understand which demon spirit is behind um the work that is going on in any given place for example i remember once i had gone to for mission trip i think we had gone somewhere there i met one brother and he was saying uh, i have made a map of all the places in this region and uh, this um, you know one place has this temple another place has another temple so he made a list of all the temples places of worship and also some spirits you know this spirit is behind this worship like that he made one map and for outreach what they all do is they'll pray against those demon spirits those exact demon spirits okay so a lot of people practice this they understand that uh, in a given region there might be some demonic strongholds so you identify those spirits you make a map and you start praying against those specific spirits for example you know we might see that in some place there is alcoholism all the people are drinking so it gives us an idea that why is everybody being affected by alcoholism maybe there is that regional territorial spirit of alcoholism that is making everybody drink or in some regions we see prostitution right why are everybody engaging in these wrong matters maybe there is a demon spirit of prostitution right things like that so as believers in some communities what people do they make a map of what demon spirits exist and then they start to pray against each one of them now the um, you know is it okay to do this it is okay to do something like this but we should not get too deep into it now sometimes people go so deep they want to research you know every uh, deep spirit what's happening okay 
yeah somebody went unmute yeah so there's no need to get so deep into it that's the point okay little bit you understand the background that's fine but if you go too deep into it it's actually unhealthy for believers that's the last point that i missed which was in the notes okay uh, parmita there is a question which you asked right you said do we need to tell a believer that he is lacking faith in certain areas or we should just pray for him i think it depends uh, parmita if you know that person or you're working with that person then maybe they are open to taking your feedback then you can share but if they are not um, going to listen to you then there's no point no you just pray for them is that okay yeah great uh sister gertrude is asking what what is channeling jesus um sister i i don't think i know the answer for that question can you can you elaborate on that sister i don't know because i think it is channeling through dead people i'm not sure it channeling through some medium but i wanted to know what is it channeling is it yeah channeling it okay. is uh, like a new age movement i'm not very sure new age movement yeah okay yeah so obviously it's wrong uh whatever that is it's wrong but i don't know exactly what channeling means even uh, i try to google and see but uh, you know i didn't uh, quite follow but i know it is not from it is not a biblical uh, uh, way it yeah, is something I mean, uh, no yes. why why would we want to channel and do all those things when we already have direct access to jesus no If somebody saw send me in a video i didn't see it when i saw the name only i googled and so i know it was wrong i didn't watch that video yeah yeah don't watch it best don't watch yeah. it don't get into these things there's no need to research all this uh, it's okay. it, it you know sometimes there are uh, demon spirits behind even the videos and the music so just don't touch it best okay thank you sister yeah thank you uh, okay um, nidel what is christian service uh, i think you had asked the same question earlier and uh, i have answered it in some of the previous uh, classes christian service is christian ministry um yeah so maybe i'll just uh, leave it at that you may have to refer back to some of the earlier videos yeah. thank you yes uh ma'am no check check ma'am uh, there if we so in the world there are lot of people's like uh, they have to debate on faith debate on faith faith okay because they are in our side also christianity also in other faith also people are like that they scholars and different people yeah those who gain knowledge about uh, their faith particularly yeah. and after that like, some situation are there on social media anywhere in any uh, function or any platform they are get, getting into a debate they are debating on uh, their yeah. to their faith is it right or wrong okay is debating right or wrong uh see it's it's okay to provide reasons when people ask a question it's okay to provide reasons but i think just debating for the sake of debating is not helpful it's not helpful also when people ask a question think more than the question why are they asking that question right so you should be able to answer uh, why then that person can have an encounter with jesus you got it so uh, i would say if it's just debate for the sake of debate it's unnecessary stay out of it but if answering the question means that somebody will encounter jesus then answer the question 
Does it make sense to you? Okay, fine. All right. Yeah, so no more questions. We'll just uh, pray and we'll close. How about you pray since the mic is in your hands? Dear Heavenly Father, we give thanks for this time, for this opportunity you give us, Father. As we learn a lot of things about, uh, as we learn a lot of things today, Father, give us better understanding to understand all these things better and give us uh, sharp memory so we can uh, memorize all these things till our last breath, Father. We submit the uh, rest of the time in your mighty hand. We ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, everyone. God bless you. Have a great day.